Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Murder, where I'll be talking about and reviewing an episode of Poirot, Murder She Wrote, Diagnosis Murder, or Jonathan Creek. Today, I'm looking at Poirot, Halloween Party, or as I like to call it, that time a shit ton of people got murdered. Halloween Party was based on the Christie novel of the same name, which was also adapted into the Kenneth Branagh version, A Haunting in Venice. So not only am I going to be reviewing the episode as normal, I'm also going to be comparing it to the Brana version, which I have to say I really enjoyed. So spoiler alert throughout if you haven't seen it yet. We begin the episode with a pumpkin, a storm, and Poirot's friend, Ariadne Oliver, carving more pumpkins, before Rowena Drake rushes in and insists she stay for the kids' Halloween party. Ariadne complains to her friend Judith that she doesn't feel well, while her daughter Miranda, who's home ill, hears weird shit on the radio and into the credits we go. Right off the bat, there are several significant differences. Poirot isn't at the titular Halloween party, which doesn't take place in Venice, in that boss-ass house. Judith doesn't exist in a haunting, which I'll call it for short. And I assume Miranda is the stand-in for Alicia, who was Rowena's daughter and was, well, already dead. So I guess Miranda's doing better than her counterpart. The kids run about enjoying themselves as two characters who weren't in a haunting complain about the cold and the busted heating. Then, not Michelle Yeoh, Mrs. Reynolds, wanders through the scene, and the character dump continues with Francis Drake, sure, her brother Edmund, who clearly physically inspired Leopold in a haunting, clumsy ass Joyce Reynolds, who was the name of Michelle Yeoh's character, which is confusing, and this dip weasel Leopold, her brother, who was much younger in a haunting and not related to Mrs. Reynolds at all. It's time to Bob for apples and Joyce tells Ariadne that she once witnessed a murder, but nobody believes her. However, she is insistent, but because they all tease her, she refuses to divulge details, and a door blows open, spooking everyone. Mrs. Goodbody, great name, bursts in being generally weird and she's quickly ushered out, so Rowena suggests they all play a game where the children stick their hands in fire! After Rowena drops a vase for no discernible reason, she kicks the kids out, but Mrs. Reynolds can't find Joyce. And then this woman screams, so I'm sure everything is fine. Poirot gets a panicked call from Ariadne, and Jesus, Joyce is dead. They straight up killed the kid. To be fair, Joyce Reynolds was murdered in a haunting in Venice, but she was a grown ass woman. On the train, Poirot meets Michael Garfield, who is heading home near the crime scene, and says he didn't know the victim, while the Drakes clear up after the party by burning all the evidence. Hooray! Judith tries to convince Miranda, who's still not well, to stay home, what with there being a murderer about, but then Poirot turns up, coming to stay for the duration of the investigation, so she sneaks out. Okay, so we are so far off course from the plot of a haunting in Venice. Poirot's only just got here, it's the day after the party, and a different person is dead, even though they have the same name. A haunting takes place in one night in a creepy ass house where Poirot is present and the storm prevents anyone from leaving. I know we're only 14 minutes in, but so far, I prefer a haunting. Poirot asks about the murder Joyce said she'd witnessed, but both ladies say she was just showing off and we learn that Judith's husband died before Miranda was born, so time to visit the police, who seem annoyed by Poirot's presence. And too, says Joyce lied about seeing a murder. Here are some leaves, as Judith shows Poirot Rowena's garden, but he needs some assistance and stumbles ever so slightly, which makes me think, what? was directed at David Suchet and not Poirot himself. The garden is banging thanks to Michael, who Judith doesn't seem to like, and they go to see Rowena and the surviving Reynolds to ask some questions. Apparently the general consensus is a tramp wandered in and killed Joyce, and Mrs. Reynolds reiterates that she was showing off and didn't actually witness a murder. Poirot investigates the murder scene, and while no murder took place there in a haunting, this is the point where someone tried to drown Poirot in it. I guess that was a nod to Joyce's demise in this one. Poirot is not impressed by these dead birds or this floofy kitty cat, but does have a nice chat with Mrs. Goodbody, who can apparently read tea leaves, but does give Poirot three options for the murder Joyce said she witnessed. Beatrice White, Leslie Ferrier, and Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe. The latter used to be looked after by Mrs. Goodbody before she was replaced by Olga Semenov, who she suspects poisoned her. Leslie Ferrier was stabbed and he was not only Mrs. Reynolds' lodger, he was dating Francis, but Joyce said she didn't know at the time it was a murder. But a swift stab to the back is a big giveaway. And finally, Beatrice White, 
Joyce's school teacher, apparently accidentally drowned, and this story is Poirot's favourite. Poirot asks this dude, Mr. Fullerton, about Leslie's death, but he says Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe's will is of more interest. Originally, she was leaving everything to her family, the Drakes, but a few weeks before her death, she changed it so that Olga would get everything, and Fullerton finds that hilarious. But in the end, it was a forgery, so it didn't matter, and Olga left. Poirot goes to church where Rowena insists he have lunch with her and Michael rocks up and chats to Miranda, much to her mother's annoyance. Oh yeah, the detective dude, I'd forgotten about him. Poirot notices Leopold's watch, which he says he bought himself, and he admits he's not that bothered by Joyce's death because he didn't like her. And then the Reverend spills the tea that Mrs. Reynolds is not actually Joyce's mother. He also agrees that Joyce told bullshit stories before Poirot runs to catch up with Miss Whitaker, whose actress also appeared in Lord Edgware Dies, and asks her about Beatrice White, but that upsets her because it's implied that they were lovers. Judith comes across her staring at the lake where Beatrice died, and there's no love lost between her and Mrs. Reynolds. But before we get the full info, Leopold interrupts by creeping around. Poirot goes to see Michael, who claims the garden is haunted, which ties into a haunting, where it was the house itself that was supposedly cursed. But while it was children who haunted the house, it's apparently drowned witches that caused the problem around here. Poirot asks about Olga, who Michael thinks is hot, and then heads off for lunch, which is super awkward and kinda hostile, and we learn that the patriarch of the family was killed by a speeding car. On a walk, Rowena yells at Michael because she doesn't want him hanging around the garden, or Francis. And that night, Mrs. Batshit mentions the vicar was the one who arranged for Olga to come to the country, and questions his morals. He's not impressed. Ariadne has a nightmare which reminds her that Rowena dropped the vase at the party, having been startled by something in the library. So Poirot asks her about it, but she says she was just being clumsy. Poirot runs into Miranda in the garden who says she and Joyce used to share secrets, and is needlessly cryptic before skipping off, and he checks out the forged will, taking it to Fullerton along with another that Leslie Ferrier had created, owing to him being a dodgy geezer. A far cry from his PTSD doctor counterpart in a haunting. Fullerton says the other fake is better than the one he made for Olga. Then we have a cut to a brief scene of Leopold walking before cutting to nighttime where Rowena is walking, lots of walking. And then it's morning again where poor Miss Whitaker comes across Leopold's body in the lake. With this new body, the detective asks Poirot to help him out, but first he talks to the poor traumatized Miss Whitaker and he figures that Beatrice killed herself, which she knew about due to the suicide note she hid from the police to save Beatrice the indignity. With both her children now dead, Mrs. Reynolds tells the vicar she thinks she's cursed. Okay then, lady. And Poirot asks him about Olga, who it turns out didn't make it home. Instead, she's missing, her parents still writing to inquire about her whereabouts. Miranda has a mysterious phone call with someone when Rowena comes to the house and admits she saw Leopold sneaking around the library that night, hence dropping the vase. And she thought he was the murderer, but now he's dead, so I guess not. Ariadne is rattling off theories which Poirot doesn't appreciate because he's trying to think. And he calls himself an idiot, realizing that Joyce hadn't witnessed the murder, Miranda had, and she's missing as she heads off with a masked figure, Michael, who's a bit of a creeper. Dude, she's like 12 and says she has to sacrifice herself to save others and grant herself immortality. She doesn't want to and he tries to force feed her poison so Poirot wapows him with his cane and the police arrest him. Miranda recalls that she saw Michael dragging a body but didn't think much of it and she didn't see whose body it was. Plus, Michael was out of the country when Joyce was murdered so what gives? Poirot decides to tell the group a ghost story, and with all three past bodies safely tucked away in their graves, it begs the question, whose body did Michael bury in the garden? Olga Semenov, of course, but turns out the forged will was a copy of an actual document Leslie hid, meaning Louise did indeed leave her fortune to Olga after all. Rowena is outraged, but she ain't seen nothing yet, as Poirot accuses her of having an affair with Michael, and also of being a crazy-ass murderer, with Michael running down Mr. Drake and now a widow, she needed to off her aunt, Mrs. Llewellyn Smythe, to gain her fortune. But Leslie Ferrier called her to warn her the will had been changed, so he made an obvious forgery of the changed will so it would be found out and discredited. But after Louise's death, Olga confronted Rowena over all the murdering she'd been doing, so she stabbed her, with Michael killing Leslie to cover their tracks. Then, at the Halloween party, when Joyce says she saw a murder, Rowena panicked and drowned her in the apple bobbing bucket, causing 
causing her to get soaking wet, which is why she dropped the vase to explain the water. She thinks she's in the clear, but Leopold saw her and Joyce go into the library and blackmailed her, hence the fancy watch. But killing him was easier, and even easier if she got Michael to do it. Rowena says it's all bullshit, but Poirot threatens to exhume Louise's body and dig up the garden to find Olga. And on top of that, Michael reveals he'd also been boinking Judith, and is the actual father of Miranda. So Rowena explodes in a rage and Michael breaks her heart. The two murderers are dragged off, leaving everyone stunned, and Olga's body is discovered. Wow, okay, so apart from some character names and it taking place at Halloween, these two versions are completely different. I'm going to give you a rundown of the plot of A Haunting in Venice so you can see why I couldn't really compare the two. Poirot is retired in Venice when his old friend Ariadne Oliver convinces him to go to a Halloween party in a supposedly cursed house because a medium will be there who is apparently the genuine article. Poirot attends the party hosted by Rowena Drake, whose daughter Alicia committed suicide previously by jumping off the balcony and into the canal because she was driven mad by the ghosts of the children who were left to die there. After the kids' part of the party is over with, the medium Joyce Reynolds shows up with her assistant to do a seance. Also a attended by the family doctor, Leslie Ferrier, who looked after Alicia, his son Leopold, who's a little kid, Rowena's housekeeper Olga Semenov, Alicia's ex-fiance Maxim, and Poirot's bodyguard. The seance gets underway, but Poirot calls bullshit, revealing a second assistant in the fireplace. But then Joyce seemingly gets possessed by the spirit of Alicia, who says she was murdered, and that that person is in the room. Poirot doesn't believe her bullshit, and she tells him to lighten up, putting her costume on him and walking off. Someone tries to drown Poirot in the apple bobbing bucket, but he's saved by the bodyguard, and then Joyce is found murdered, impaled on a thing. The storm and Poirot prevent anyone from leaving, so now they're trapped in this spooky ass house, while Poirot investigates, and also he sees ghosts and shit. Poirot discovers that his bodyguard and Ariadne conspired to get him there and help Joyce pull off the possession seance thing in order to sell books. And during the night, Leslie, the doctor, has a breakdown and is locked in a room with Poirot having the only key, where he's later found stabbed in the back, so at least that's consistent. Poirot works it all out that Rowena was so obsessed with her daughter she didn't want her to marry Maxim, so kept her crazy with drugged honey in the tea, also using it on Poirot, which is why he's been seeing weird shit. But one night, when Alicia had an episode and Rowena was asleep, Olga gave her tea, thinking it would help, and knowingly overdosing her on the drugs. Rowena then chucked her off the balcony to make it seem like a suicide, covering up all the drugging she'd been doing, but then she started getting blackmailed and narrowed it down to Joyce, who knew she was murdered, and the doctor who performed the inquest. So she killed Joyce, initially trying to kill Poirot because he was wearing Joyce's costume, and she called the doctor on an internal phone, threatening to hurt Leopold if he didn't stab himself to death, which is kind of weird. And then she ends up falling off the balcony to her death before we find out that Leopold, yes, the little kid, was the blackmailer all along. So yes, very different versions of the story, and honestly, I prefer the Kenneth Branagh version. I mean, obviously David Suchet is the ultimate Poirot for me, but the story was better crafted, tighter, the setting was awesome, it was a closed circle mystery, it was really spooky, a little too dark to see anything at some points, took place over the course of a single night, and the character motivations made more sense to me. Both versions were about the same length, but the Suchet version felt so much longer, perhaps because of all the extra characters and plot points crammed in there, and of course, nearly double the amount of bodies. So let's get back to Halloween party, and let's set aside that a sugar mama went on a killing spree with a toy boy who was also banging someone else and was into sacrifices and shit, because let's face it, that's a little silly. And instead, look at the sheer number of murders and deaths that occurred in this one. When they introduced Joyce Reynolds, I thought, there's no way they'd kill off a kid, but nope, they straight up killed off a kid. And poor thing didn't even do anything. Then we have Lionel, who granted was older than his movie counterpart, but still was fairly young. And no, seriously, if you find yourself in a murder mystery, don't blackmail the killer, you will wind up dead. The other five deaths were in the past and of people you don't really meet properly, so it's hard to feel particularly bad for them. But a body count this high is always shocking, and I like how they explored different kinds of relationships. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but these longer Poirot episodes could do with cutting out some characters and plot threads, which they did for the movie adaptation, which I really enjoyed. 
Fans of the novel are going to be mad at a haunting in Venice, but if you think of the adaptation as a homage rather than a remake, you will begin to see lots of little detail that nod to the original source material. We have quite the body count, so let's start with our only standalone death, Beatrice White, who threw herself into a lake because she couldn't deal with her own sexuality or the threat of losing her job. Then we have an even split between our two killers. Joyce Reynolds drowned to death because she may have been witness to a murder, Louise Llewellyn Smythe poisoned for her fortune, and Olga Semenov stabbed to death because she knew what our first killer, Rowena Drake, was up to. Then we have Leopold Reynolds, witness to the lead up to his sister's murder, drowned in the lake, Leslie Ferrier, who knew too much about the fraud scheme and was stabbed, and Mr. Drake, who had the misfortune of being married to a lunatic, and he was run down by a car driven by our second killer, Michael Garfield, who did it all for the money and beauty, apparently. So there you have it. That was a Halloween party and its comparison to a haunting in Venice. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button. It really does mean a lot. Or consider subscribing if you want more videos like this one. Alternatively, feel free to check out my other YouTube channels. Thank you so much for watching. I'll speak to you soon and keep an eye out for clues.